There's a magical place we're on our way there With toys in the millions all under one roof It's called Toys of Us Soon after bedtime when dark night time falls Jeffrey and helpers stock up all the shelves From ceiling to floor, boots, board games and bikes Teddies, puppets and dolls, bats, spaceships and trikes There's millions, says Jeffrey, all under one roof It's called Toys of Us everyone, Shock16, back once again for the Renegade Master. It's been a while. Yet again, it has been a while. Three months to be exact since I last made a proper video anyway. I mean, I know I did them quick uploads um, just off my phone for the Shock's Box winning and stuff like that, but yeah. Since I actually made, since I actually sat down and made a proper video, it's been three months according to YouTube yet again. So yeah, no excuses, just went on a bit of a hiatus because I can't be bothered. <laughs> yeah, I just couldn't be asked. No excuse, just couldn't be asked. But yeah, I thought I'd come back, start making videos again. Hopefully, they are gonna start being regular again as well, so yeah. Um, you're very fortunate or unfortunate, depending on which side of the scale you sit on of shocks, love and hate, really, aren't you? But yeah, anyway. Um, if you've already read the title, you already know what this is going to be uh, about. Also, if you've just watched that little clip of that classic advert, you should know what I'm going to be talking about as well. And that is Toys R Us. That's right. Yet again, we have lost another iconic store from the high street. As if losing Blockbuster Video and Woolworths weren't bad enough, we're now losing Toys R Us. So, yeah, um, I just wanted to do a little bit of a farewell video really for Toys R Us because it's a store that I have a lot of memories of and stuff like that because I've, I've talked about it in other videos before but um, part of my birthday present growing up when I was a kid was from my auntie and uncle like obviously apart from the money that they used to give me or the present they used to buy me too part of their birthday present was they would either take me to Toys R Us or Meadow Hall but it was usually Toys R Us and yeah, we'd go to Toys R Us, I'd spend my money and then we'd get like a McDonald's or Burger King or something on the way out. Basically it was a proper day out, I made a proper day out of it. That was part of their present, was taking me to Toys R Us and that. So yeah, I have a lot of memories of it really. And yeah, it's a bit sad, a bit sad to be seeing it gone. Um, but you know, that's how it is isn't it Re retailers just can't compete with the online market these days can they do you know I mean yeah stuff like amazon that's just killed it off aren't they they can't compete and toys r us has never been really a place to go for bargains was it it was never really a place to go for, uh, for a good bargain but it was just an iconic store because yeah because it had everything back in the day anyway when I was a kid it used to have everything or it seemed like it used to have everything you could ever want as a kid so yeah, anyway I just thought I would talk and reminisce about some of the things that I specifically remember getting from Toys R Us so yeah I'm gonna kick it off with one of the things that I was really really into oh yeah if I can find pictures then I'll put them up as well so you can, I don't know, so you can look at what I'm talking about and stuff like that. So yeah, one of the things that I was massively into as a kid was Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, because I'm from the UK, and our UK, tiny UK child minds can't deal with the word ninjas. We have to have heroes. So yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja, no, Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, fucking hell, getting mixed up now. Um, yeah, it was Hero Turtles anyway, I used to be massively into them. Anything Hero Turtles, I had it, or I had to have it. I just loved the shit out of it. And again, I've talked about it in other videos, that Christmas, that epic Christmas where my parents really came through for me, and they didn't get me just one turtle, they got me the, all four of the turtles. I, I unwrapped them one after the other, the whole set of turtles, and I also got like um, Master Splinter, um, Shredder, which was a toy that I knew the Master Shredder, the Master Shredder, the Shredder um, toy as well from that classic 88, was it 88 toy line? Um, I never liked the pose for it because he was kind of crouched down and he always looked like he was taking a shit. It was a really weird pose to put him in. 
pose. But yeah, it was epic having the shred about it. I just never understood why they put him in that pose. And um, what else did I have? Yeah, some foot soldiers and Bebop. Never had Rocksteady. Rocksteady was always sold out. I don't know what it was about Rocksteady, but it's like nowhere seemed to stock him for some reason. Every time I went to get that Rocksteady, I, I could never get him. But yeah, anyway, so that was like the only probably like hero turtle toy like one of the most like prominent characters from the series that i never actually got was rocksteady so yeah there you go um but yeah anyway toys r us so obviously i got them for christmas but toys r us i can remember um walking down this aisle and it was just filled just filled with hero turtle figures like it had its like its own section just dedicated to Hero Turtle figures. It was amazing. Just blew my socks off as a kid. I couldn't believe it. It was like an Aladdin's cave of everything Hero Turtles. It was, like like I said, Toys R Us just seemed to have everything. And there was like figures there that I didn't even know exist. Never seen in catalogues or like that, and or on the adverts or anything like that. I just saw them and I was like, I didn't even know these existed. But yeah, one, that I had to get that distinctively, specifically, distinctively, don't know what word I'm trying to look for there, but one that I really remember getting was one of my other favourite characters, and that was Casey Jones. I had to have Casey Jones, and yeah, I just saw the character. I, it, it didn't look anything like he looked in the cartoon, or even in the movie, or like that, but it still looked cool. It was a really cool figure. The only thing that really um, bugged me about it, well, not really bugged me about it, but used to make me question about it, where even back then as a kid was why the maid? Because he came with like a golf bag and he had like, he had a, in the golf bag he had his like weapons, so he had like baseball bats and uh, a golf club and stuff like that, but they made the baseball bats and the golf club the same colour green as the bag. And I never understood why, I mean would it really have hurt him just to make the baseball bats out of black brown plastic so to like represent wood or something like that and then the golf club out of some grey silver plastic or something like that to represent metal do you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean there was really that lazy that they couldn't that they had to like colour code it to, it just made no sense why they colour coded the baseball bats and the golf club to the bag always threw me off yeah, and another um, character that I got, like I say, this was a character that I knew nothing about. It was a camel, and I think his name was called Sandstorm. Again, if I can f find him, I'll put him up. Yeah, it was like a mutated camel. He had the fez. He had, like, the Aladdin sword. What do you call them swords? Oh, I forgot the name of them now. I call it the Aladdin sword. You know what I'm on about. Them kind of, like, Arabian Arab swords. So, yeah, it's, like, very stereotypical... Um, Arabian, Egyptian kind of character. So he had the fez, he had the sword, and he even had a shield made out of um, a magic carpet. Um, again, all colour coded, all his weapons were purple. So yeah, I don't know, anything to save money, eh? Um, just make it all out of one colour. <laughs> um, so yeah, I remember that. But he was one of those characters, like I said, that wasn't in the series, or did they add him in later series? I think he was one of those characters that they added um, later on in the cartoon series to, know, you know I mean? to make the figures more relevant. Because I think they did it with some other characters as well because you could get that um, rabbit. I can't remember his name. Was his name Yujimbo or something like that? Yeah, there was like a rabbit and a duck. And I think there was like a toad or something as well. And like I said, they all had figures, but nobody knew who they was, so I think they added them into the cartoon series in the later series. Anyway, so yeah, Hero Turtles figures was one thing that I really, really remember getting from Toys R Us. Um, still on the... I've made a little list, by the way, if you keep me... keep seeing me look over here. <laughs> over the last few days, I've been, like, jotting them down. So yeah, another thing that I remember getting coming back with from Toys R Us from a birthday was Robin Hood Prince of Thieves figures yeah um, I don't know if anybody even knew if they made them or not but I had them and they was made by Kenner and this <laughs> uh, um, among people that actually collect figures they all already probably know why these are kind of like famous these Prince of Hood uh, Prince of Hood Prince of Thieves Robin Hood Prince of Thieves figures um, were quite famous because they recycled 
parts of other figures that like Ken had used, like moulds and stuff like that. So, for instance, like I had Robin Hood himself. Robin Hood came in two variants, by the way, as well. You could get him like you could get the longbow variant, or you get him with a crossbow. But do you know what I mean the longbow is more iconic in it when you think of Robin Hood. So I had the longbow version, and I had Little John figure as well. But yeah. When I, when I say that we recycled them, like um, Robin Hood, apart from like the mould of his face to look a bit like a bit like Kevin Costner. Um, so yeah, apart from having a different head, I think his body was from the DC Superpowers line. So I think he had um, like the mould that they used for it. It was just repainted, and it was the mould from the Green the Green Arrow figure. So much so that. This is something that I didn't notice as well until I was reading up on it like um, a few weeks back and so much so that on Robin Hood's belt buckle it still has the G on it for Green Arrow like they, they didn't replace the G <laughs> so he's like still got a belt buckle with G on it <laughs> that's how badly that they recycled it and little John I think he had like the um, torso of who did he have the torso of like Hawkman from the same line, from the DC Superpowers line, and they had the legs of Batman. <laughs> but like I said, it was just repainted, so it looked like like a new outfit kind of thing, like a specific to like him kind of thing. And yeah, another thing that I had for the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves, and it came in a massive box. I can remember my mum thinking, well, well, my mum saying actually, what the hell have you brought there? It's massive, and it came in a big box, and it was the. Um, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, Battle Wagon, which was the Ewoks from, I think it was the Return of the Jedi, it was just recycled, it was basically, again, just recycled, repainted, and rebranded as Robin Hood, Men, uh, Men in Tires, Men in Tires, not Men in Tires, Prince of Thieves, Men in Tires, I like that film though, Men in Tires, good spoof though, um, but yeah, anyway, it was, yeah, rebranded as Robin Hood, basically. You can go online, get some Google images up of them, and you can compare them. It's exactly the same toy, but just repainted, different colours. Um, and it was the same. I didn't, I didn't have this, but the Sherwood Forest playset that came with that toy line as well. That was just a repainted Ewok village. So yeah, the toys were basically just recycled. That's Kenner for you, isn't it? Um, so what else did I get? Um, yeah. So on to like kind of video gaming stuff and that and some of the earliest like video games I remember buying was for my Atari ST because that was like my first kind of gaming system so to speak because we had the Atari 2600 before that but that was like a shared thing it was between me and my sister and even my parents used to play on it as well the Atari 2600 or 2600 I don't know we used to say 2600 but whatever so yeah, the Atari ST, that was my own. That was in my bedroom and everything. So yeah, um, some of the games I remember specifically buying from Toys R Us was um, Sly Spy Secret Agent. Loved that game. Um, I played it first around my cousin's house. Um, he, he had it on his Commodore C64 and I loved that game. It was basically, it was just, it was James Bond, the game, basically. <laughs> It, that's what it was. It was it was based on James Bond. All the levels are on James Bond, and I mean all the villains and everything. I mean one of the um, one of the power ups is the Golden Gun and stuff like that. So it's just James Bond the game without the James Bond license. If you've ever played it, it's a great game. If you've not, if you've got an Atari ST or a Commodore or, or an Amiga or something like that, pick up Slice by Secret Agent. Great game. Um, another one I remember picking up, which was really strange for me as well, because I wasn't into this genre at that age, and that is um, Lombard RAC Rally. And like I said, I wasn't really into rally games. I, I got into rally games like um, during like the 32-bit era, you know, with Colin McRae and stuff like that. That's when I kind of got into rally games. So it was a bit weird me buying this. I don't know why I bought it. I, I must have just thought that the cover looked like the car look cool or something on the cover and I can remember I never really got on with that game because like, I used to play it with the um, Quick Shot 2 joystick and it just didn't work for a rally game and it, I used to think it was hard as shit that game so I didn't really get very far on it and then the other one I remember buying a classic if you've had an Amiga if you yeah if you've had an Amiga an Atari ST or 
a Commodore or something like that, then you more than likely played this game. And it is James Pond 2 Robocod. Great little platformer game that is. Like I say, it's kind of iconic on that kind of era of gaming as well. Um, yeah, just about anybody who had like one of them kind of main computer gaming systems around that area used to have, used to have that game. Classic game. Wet the old whistle. Lemonade. Completely a man's drink there. Lemonade, mate. Oh, white lemonade. I'm a secret lemonade drinker. Can anybody remember that advert? Show me age now. Um, so yeah, other ones that I remember getting. Game Boy, spoke about the Game Boy before. Um, I did a video on it a few, a few videos back, probably about four months ago now. <laughs> um, I did the collection and showed some of them. But yeah, the two that I remember getting from Toys R Us was obviously Mighty Morphin, Power Rangers. Again, a game that I don't really understand why I bought it. I must have just bought it because of the Power Rangers cover and I just thought it looked cool and stuff because I didn't really get on with it when I bought it as a kid. I've kind of appreciated it a little bit more now. I think it's an okay game. But yeah, I didn't really get too far with it as a kid when I bought it. And then the other one was Super Hunchback, with, which is one of my favourite games on the Game Boy. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know if you can class it as a great game, but it's a decent platformer and yeah, I really like that game. So yeah, Power Rangers, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, because there's two Power Rangers games on the Game Boy. One's based on the movie, and one's obviously based on the TV series. Um, so yeah, oh! Now this is probably the best thing that I ever bought from Toys R Us, the best thing. And I've talked about this before as well, and that was my Super Nintendo. 70 pounds Starwing pack. I've now got that pack back as well, by the way. I bought it recently, no pickups video, <laughs> but um, yeah, I did buy a Starwing pack back again. So I've got I've got like nostalgias back on the shelves now again, back on the unit um, because I've I have got a Street Fighter 2 Super Nintendo as well, which does have nostalgic memories. But I always wanted the Starwing pack back, and I've got that back. I'm so glad I've got that back now. But I don't want to talk too much about it because I've got a Super Nintendo memories video coming up. That I'm going to be recording soon. Um, yeah, I'm doing like a little series. Basically, if you if you watch Dave Lawn Boys Post, he's been doing like um, a memory series of different consoles. So yeah, I'm going to be doing my own series in in response to like his ones. So it's like video response slash little mini me memory series of my own. So there you go. Um, but yeah, and like I say, the Super Nintendo. I'll talk more into my memories and stuff about the Super Nintendo in that video. But yeah. One of the best things I ever got, £70 Starwin Super Nintendo pack from Toys R Us. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of things I remember getting for myself. But I also remember going with other people like um, like my cousin and my mates and stuff like that. Because again, I've talked about this in other videos as well. I was quite, um, I was quite good at not manipulating people, but kind of putting the ideas into people's heads. Like if I, like I was very good. Like if I wanted to play something, like if there was a toy I wanted to play with, or if there was a, a video game that I wanted to play or something, I was very good at putting the idea into people's heads that they needed it. So that, that when they, they bought it, I could go around their ass and play with it kind of thing, or play on it and stuff like that. I was very good at that as a kid. <laughs> So yeah, other times I remember really distinctively. Is that the right way? Is that the right word, distinctively? Specifically at Toys R Us, vividly. Is that the right word, vividly? When it comes to memories. You have to let me know, you have to let me know. Never read, no, never was good at the old English language. I can, I can barely speak it, barely speak it. I know all the words, I just don't know how to put them all together as a sentence. <laughs> Um, so yeah, again, something that I've talked about, so yeah, my mate on his birthday, uh, Mortal Kombat, I was, I was just ready for this game to come out on own port, I played it in the arcades, and I thought it was amazing, but I only had like a little, a few goes on it, and I can remember watching somebody else play it, like you know when you used to stand around and watch the people that were really good on the arcade machines? Do you know what I mean? Well, like, if you was good in the arcades, people used to crowd around you, didn't you? And I, I used to watch, 
I can remember just watching this guy on Mortal Kombat and think like, it would just look like an amazing game. And I, I knew it was coming out, Mortal Monday. I can remember Mortal Monday. You know, the um, old advert with the guy screaming in the street, Mortal Kombat! And I was so pumped to get it. And I was going to get it from my Super Nintendo. And I, did I get it? I can't remember if I got it or I just borrowed it for a really long time. I don't think I actually did buy the original Mortal Kombat because I was bummed out that the Nintendo removed all the blood, didn't they? They removed the blood and the death moves and stuff like that and it was just, yeah, it just went Mortal Kombat. Whereas the Mega Drive version, you could enter, you know, A, B, A, C, A, B, B, still remember it, blood the blood code that gave you the proper death moves and added all the blood back. So it was like the definitive version, in my opinion, was the Mega Drive version. Still love that version. It's the version that I own now. It's like, I didn't have a Mega Drive growing up, but obviously when I bought a Mega Drive, that was like one of the first games I picked up was Mortal Kombat 3. I'm not, not interested in the SNES version. <laughs> but yeah, so, and my mate had a Mega Drive, so I kind of put the idea into his head. I like, I basically hyped up Mortal Kombat so that he was hyped up about it. <laughs> and then when we went to Toys R Us, he, that was what he picked up for his birthday and yeah, I, I was sleeping over at his house and stuff like that. We had like a sleepover and we, I could just remember his like playing it till the early hours of the morning. I think we completed it as well. Yeah, I love Mortal Kombat, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't even think he was that interested in buying it really, but because I put the idea in his head that he needed this game, I basically got to play it. <laughs> and then sticking with Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2. Again, in the arcades, played it in the arcades, and I just thought, wow, this blows the first game out of the water. Love Mortal Kombat 2. And yeah, like I said, I know it was getting released on the consoles again. And my cousin, my cousin was also a Mortal Kombat fan as well. A couple of years long, younger than me, and it was coming up to his birthday, and I can remember it was, again, I was gonna be sleeping at his house like the follow it was at my house one weekend and then the following weekend was his birthday weekend and I knew that I was going to be staying over because I think we was going like I think we was going swimming McDonald's and then we was going to um, the cinema or something I can't remember what we saw now I can't remember what film we saw now would it have been Gold Golden Eye something like that James Bond Golden Eye something like that can't remember what it was but we saw now was it the Flintstone no it weren't Flintstones I think it was Golden Eye that we saw but yeah um, like I said Mortal Kombat 2 was coming out on Mega Drive and like Super Nintendo and everything like that but it was my cousin's birthday so, and like I said he was at my house the weekend before so again I was hyping it up hyping it up hyping it up so that all week leading up to his birthday basically I was putting the groundwork in ready for his birthday basically and so he was like up about it and then come his birthday weekend, again, I, my auntie and uncle took us to Toys R Us, like his mum and dad, that auntie and uncle. <laughs> and yeah, he picked up Mortal Kombat 2 for him, his birthday. And I can remember we got like a, a, it was either a strategy guide or it was like a, just a, something like me machines or something like that. And it had all the death moves in and stuff like that. And we just stayed up all, Night and all weekend we were just practicing the death moves. Great, great memories. Love that weekend. Really good weekend that was. But yeah, again, my cousin ended up buying Mortal Kombat 2 mainly because I put the idea in his head that he needed it. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, another story of Toys R Us as well. That same, that same cousin. When we went, to my, he was really like I say, he was a couple of years younger than me. Still is a couple of years younger than me, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> but he was really big into the Power Rangers. And I can remember where he was going when we went to Toys R Us on his birthday to go get some Power Rangers figures. And I can remember one that he really wanted was the Green Ranger. And he could not get the Green Ranger anywhere. Sold out. Completely sold out. And I can remember he, he ended up going home with the Black Ranger instead. <laughs> I just always remember it because I can just remember... Um, like the look on his face when he couldn't get the Green Ranger and he had to settle for like the Black Ranger and stuff like that. <laughs> um, and yeah, the, la the last, right, the last time I ever went to um, Toys R Us, I think it was about 2004 ish. Because um, I, I think I went to get something for my goddaughter or something like that from there. 
but we didn't actually end up getting her out in the end from there. But I think that was the last time I ever went to a Toys R Us. So yeah, it's probably been what? What's that? That's oh god, I'm I'm not I'm not good at math. No good at quick math. Um. Yeah, let's just say 15 years or something, 15, 16 years or something since I last went to a Toys R Us. But, yeah, the last like time I remember going back in the day was when my mate got his PlayStation. Yeah, when he got his, play, his PlayStation 1, or just the PlayStation. <laughs> I know there's some people out there, um, Daz Cajonos Doloro, that doesn't like saying PS1. I'm with him on that as well. I, it's not the PS1, it's the PlayStation, isn't it? PS1 was the other console that was like the the newer version weren't it the PS1 so the PlayStation I can remember him picking it up and as far as uh, my memory recalls it was the value I want to say it was the value pack because the pack that I got I got my pack a bit later because I had the Sega Saturn first and then I jumped ship to the PlayStation and the one I got it was the Dual the Dual Shock pack you know when the gave you the analog like dual shock and controllers and stuff like that so depending if the value pack came out before that pack that was the pack that he got <laughs> um yeah and the games that i remember him getting with that was destruction derby which was a game that i wasn't really that hyped about i didn't really rate it destruction derby i know a lot of people out there do and i, I um do you know what i mean i kind of appreciate what destruction derby did and like the ground it was breaking at the time but it's not really a game that I was all into back then I, I appreciate it more as an adult destruction derby but the other game that my mate got was of course was Tekken and yeah Tekken was amazing absolutely amazing it's the game that made me buy a PlayStation in the end so yeah that's it and that's it anyway that was my uh, memories of Toys R Us so yeah what is, what's your thoughts on Toys R Us um, closing down will you be sad to see it go and yeah hit me up with comments in the comment section let me know that like, like, what was the best thing what was you like the best thing you remember getting from Toys R Us maybe you never even went to Toys R Us maybe you never rated Toys R Us maybe it's just like one of them yeah never rated Toys R Us but for me it was an iconic store with lots of memories and great times like I say days out on my birthday actually going and spending all my money there and stuff like that on my birthday so yeah let me know what's some of the great stuff that you got from Toys R Us and I'll see you in the next video see you then